Okay, so now we are ready to talk about momentum based gradient descent and we will see whether it tries to fix the problem. So, what were our observations about gradient descent? That it takes a lot of time to navigate regions having a gentle slope, right? So, wherever we have gentle slope and now again connecting it to the discussion on contours, gentle slope means if you have two successive rings, the distance between them would be very large and in those gentle slope regions, it takes a long time and the intuition is clear because on those slopes, the gradients are small. Uh, and if the gradients are small, your updates are small. So, at every point you are moving like a very, very, very small step. So, it will take a lot of steps to get out of that flat surface, right. Uh, and this is what is explained here. So, can we do something better? So, let us take a look at momentum based gradient descent, okay. Uh, so, there is the intuition, right. And I uh, will repeat the intuition which I always give for this, right. So, uh, this would be relevant to the audience here at IIT Madras. So, now suppose you are standing at the Velachiri gate, right, and you are asking instructions, you ask the, uh, uh, some person there about how do I go to Phoenix uh, Market City Mall, right, and that person would say that uh, you take a right uh, from the gate and you will reach the mall, right. So, now you have asked someone, but you are a bit conservative. So, you take a small uh, step uh, towards in that direction. You take small, small steps and say after say 10 steps or 20 steps or say about 100 steps, you ask someone else, hey, where is uh, uh, the mall? And that person again says, yeah, go in this direction, right? Go towards the right. So, now your confidence would increase, right? Because now repeatedly you are being told to go in that direction. Someone said go to the right, again someone said go to the right. So, now maybe you will start want to increase your speed a bit, right? Because you have two uh, validations for uh, this direction that this is the right direction, right? Then you again walk a few steps and then you ask someone where to go. Again, that person points you in that direction. So, then you again start your confidence increases and you gain more momentum, right? So, what we are trying to say here is that if you are repeatedly being asked to go in the same direction, then you should probably gain confidence and start taking bigger steps in that direction, right? So, at this step, when you are computing the gradient, maybe the gradient is small because you are on a gentle surface, but you have been moving in this direction for a long time, right? So, this is what your uh, uh, surface looked like, okay? This is very gentle slope here. So, you are every step is small, right? But you have been moving along this direction for a long time. So, what if you accumulate all this and then start moving very fast so that you can come out of this, uh, uh, this gentle region very quickly, right? So, that is the idea of momentum based gradient descent and we now need to take this uh, intuition and convert it into an equation, right? So, let us uh, see and this is the same as a ball gains momentum while rolling down a slope, right? So, it is slowly moving when it is on the gentle part here right? But at its moving, it gains momentum and then it starts moving very fast, right? Because one way of looking at it is that it is constantly being pushed in that direction. So, you are also constantly being asked to go in that direction. The slope is small, but the direction is constantly this, right? You are saying, okay, go here. At every point, you are saying, go here, go here, go here. So, if so many times you have been asked to go here, can you go a bit faster, right? So, how do you capture this intuition into a set of equations, right? So, this is what we will do. So, this is the update rule for momentum based gradient descent, okay. So, this is what I will call as the history vector, fine. And uh, you are giving some importance to the past history plus the current uh, update, right. So, this is your derivative of the loss function with respect to the gradient, oh, sorry, derivative of the loss function with respect to the parameter w at the current time step, right. So, now the difference is the following, right. So, in uh, In gradient descent, your update rule was wt minus eta times delta wt. That means you are only listening to the current instruction. You are not really considering the fact that I have been constantly being asked to go in the direction. Okay, people might have asked me to go in this direction, but where am I asked, where, where are people asking me to go in the current step? In this direction? Okay, I will just follow that, right? But this entire history which was there that you were constantly being asked to go in that direction that is not being captured, right? So, now instead of just moving according to the current uh, uh, derivative or the current gradient, you are actually also considering the entire history, right? And this is a recursive equation and we will just open this recursive equation soon, but this is akin to kind of taking all your past gradients and giving them some importance and then moving in the q 
cumulative direction. Right? So that's what you are trying to do here and this would become clear on the next slide. So let me just do that and then come back uh, to this slide. Right? So what is happening here? So this is what my equation is, right? that ut and I was saying that ut is my history vector. So let's see how I am constructing this ut. So of course, uh, at time step 0 because my u minus 1 is not defined. Right? So if I want to compute u0, I need beta times u minus 1 and there is no minus 1 step. So I am just going to set it to 0. So at time step equal to uh, uh, 0, this is how this will turn out right? and this quantity is 0. So we will just have uh, uh, u0 is equal to the derivative of the loss function with respect to the parameter at time step 0. Now let us see what u1 would be. So u1 will be beta times u0 plus the current uh, derivative. So now if I substitute the value of u0 then it would be beta times delta the previous derivative plus w1. Right? So this is what I mean by the history. Now you are not only considering the current derivative but you are also giving some importance to the past history. Right? You are saying oh in the past also I was asked to move in this some direction so I will take that also into account. Right? And now beta uh, u2 would be beta square into the derivative at time step 0, beta into the derivative at time step 1 and then the current derivative. Right? So your updates remember are wt is equal to wt minus 1 minus eta into ut. Right? Now this ut is essentially this. Right? So it is not only the current derivative. So at time step 2, you are not just taking the current derivative, but you are also taking all the history into account. Right? So that is what is happening in momentum based gradient descent. And this beta is typically less than 1. Right? So typical value for beta would be 0.9. So what does that mean? You are giving weightage of 1 to the current gradient. That is the maximum weightage you are giving. Gradient of point, weightage of 0.9 to the previous gradient. Weightage of 0.9 square, which would be 0.81 to the previous gradient. So you are giving decreasing importance to your uh, previous and previous gradients. Right? As you are farther from the current step, your weightage of that gradient is less. But you are still accumulating all of that and hence collectively this sum should tell you right? because instead of just moving with this, now collectively you will be moving by a larger amount and that is exactly what you want on the flat surfaces because you are moving slow, 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 slow at every time step your uh, movement is slow but if you just accumulate this history then your movement would become fast. right? So that is what is happening here. So your ut is just going to be the sum of this. right? So this was at time step 2, this was just uh, you could write this as beta 2 minus 0 into w0, then beta 2 minus 1 into w1 plus beta 2 minus 2 into w2, right? sorry delta should have been here. So that is what this equation is capturing. right? So this minus 0 is essentially minus tau. So you are going from time step 0 to time step tau and at every stage your weightage for that gradient is given by beta t minus beta raised to t minus tau. Right? So that is what u t is, it is a collection of all the gradients that you have seen so far and this exponentially weighted average of current and all past gradients. Right? As I was saying that if you are currently at time step 9, right? then the weightage for the current gradient would be 1 right? because this would be 9 minus 9 and that would be 0. If you are at time step, if you are looking at the gradient at time step 8, then that would be 9 minus 8. So it would be given the weightage of beta and as I said, beta is typically 0.9. So this would keep decreasing exponentially. So the gradients which were taken very long back will have very less say in this cumulative history. Right? So that is what the idea behind momentum is. And now with this idea in mind, let me go back to the previous slide and again try to look at the equations. Right? So this is what the equations look like. Now we understand that this quantity here actually captures the entire history. Okay? The weights are initialized randomly. Your u minus 1 is 0 and beta is a const uh, quantity between 0 to 1. So what you are doing is taking an exponentially weighted average of all the gradients and now it should be clear that instead of moving just by the current gradient which on a flat surface would be very small you are moving by this current, this cumulative history right? and that cumulative history would of course be larger than the current gradient because it also includes the current gradient. Right? So hence you will be able to move by larger amounts. Right? So let us see what happens now uh, when we run this algorithm. Okay, 
this is responding very slowly. Okay, so this is how I have written momentum based gradient descent. So, it is very similar to the gradient descent algorithm that I had written. Let me just point out things here. Uh, so, this is my initialization. So, I have initialized w and b to some random values for the sake of convenience minus 2 minus 2. Eta I have just taken 1, I am not playing, playing around with the learning rate. And I have this uh, for the ut, right, which was storing the history. So, I have initialized the history for w as well as uh, b to be equal to 0, right. And I have taken beta as 0.9, as I said, 0.9 is the typical value. Now, this part is the same as gradient, gradient descent for every point in my training data, I am computing the derivative and just summing up the derivative. So, that is the derivative of the loss function and now I am maintaining this cumulative uh, history in Vw and Vb and then updating according to the cumulative history as opposed to the current uh, or as, as opposed to only using the current gradient. Right? So, that is what the code is doing, it is in line with the uh, a set of equations that you had. If you want, you can pause at this point and look at the code more carefully, um, but it is pretty uh, straightforward. Okay. So, now let us try to run uh, momentum based gradient descent. Okay. And now you will see that it, earlier it was very slow, now it started moving very fast and it has gone like somewhere and it is coming back now. Whether that is a problem or not is something that we will discuss soon, but what is clear it is that definitely moving much faster than the gradient descent algorithm, right. And later on we will have some uh, uh, comment on both gradient descent and momentum uh, starting together and you will see the difference in one moving faster and the other moving slower, okay. Uh, but here it is clear that the momentum based algorithm is moving faster and we understand why that is also happening, right. Let us look at the other view now. So, this is the contour map you understand what the contour map is. So, this region here is a flat region. So, this region here is a flat region and then here there the slope is very steep and then again here the slope is very gentle. This is again the slope is steep. These are again flat regions, right. So, you understand what that is. So, this is just the contour map corresponding to the 3D plot that we had and now we will try to run uh, gradient descent on this contour map, right? it is nothing different from what I have shown here, but now I can see the other view of what is happening to the sigmoid function and you will see something interesting here, right. So, let us run it. Of course, it is moving very fast and it is almost reached there, but then again it has moved far and then again come to something. Right? So, some things are happening here which many of you might be realizing that it is oscillating around the solution and we will see why that is happening and how to fix that, right. What is clear for now is that it is moving faster than gradient descent, right. So, some observations and questions. Even in the regions having gentle slopes, momentum based gradient descent is able to take large steps because the momentum carries it along, right, because it is having the entire history behind it, it just goes faster now. But is moving fast always so good, right. Would there be a situation where momentum would cause us to run past our goal, right. And again, I will go back to my analogy. So, you are going towards the Phoenix market city, a lot of momentum has been built, many people have asked you to go in the right, 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 right and now suppose imagine you are on a scooter because now you are fast and you go very fast, okay, people have said go RAS, so you just zoom and go, now what will happen? You will cross the mall and go ahead, right and then you will have to take a U-turn and come back and you are taking a U-turn, people will say, okay, go in the left direction or go this way. And again, you will say, okay, many people are saying that, so let me go fast, then again, you might overshoot and then again, come back, take a U-turn, come back and so on, right. So, going fast is not always good, as you'd say, I mean, you could imagine in a, any navigation problem, if you just keep going fast without checking whether, okay, everything is fine, you might overshoot and then have to take a U-turn and come back, right. In fact, and this is what the U-turns are what we saw on the momentum gradient descent, right. So, it actually overshot, right. So, it had come uh, here. So, it had actually if you look at, yeah, this is what it looked like, right. So, now, uh, so it went down in the valley. Now, it should have gone towards its goal, but it overshadowed the goal, right. It went further ahead, then it took a U-turn and came back. Now, again, it should have gone somewhere here, but its momentum carried it here in this direction. And then again, it had to take a U-turn and come back here, right. So, that is what we saw. So, clearly it is moving fast but it is it's kind of 
moving a bit out of control, right? So, we need to see whether if we can control the way it is moving, right? And so make, let us see this in a more, in a one more setting, right? So, now we have this kind of an input and you have a very weird looking 3D surface here, right? And this is what the contour map looks like and now I am just going to focus on the contour map because the contour map tells me everything. This is a flat surface and from this flat surface I am quickly moving into a valley, right? So, there is a steep slope which go, takes me to a valley. Similarly, here I have a flat surface and I am going into a valley from a steep slope. So, this is a surface where you have like flat surfaces here and then you quickly move into a valley from both sides, right? So, from all sides you have flat surfaces and then you quickly move into a valley. So, this is what it looks like. It is a very steep valley and now you can imagine, right? So, if I put a ball here, it will roll down, it will not stop here. It will go up, then again come back, go up, then again come back and it will keep oscillating, right? So, let us see if this effect is what we see in the momentum based gradient descent algorithm modes. So, now you see gradient descent is moving very slow, but it is decidedly going towards its goal. Okay, I will have to play this video a few times. So, this gradient descent is slowly converging now. You can see that it is found the configuration where both the points lie on the sigmoid function. Right? So, this is actually a sigmoid function like this. Right? So, uh, I am just showing you a slice. So, it is a sigmoid function like this and I am just showing you this portion of the sigmoid function. So, it is not a line, it is still a sigmoid function. It is just that it is a very uh, uh, gentle slope sigmoid function. So, it is going to go like this and at this point it is going to go like this. Okay, But let us focus on the uh, movement again. So, let us see. Now, you can see clearly that momentum based gradient descent is moving much faster, right? but then it is also oscillating a lot. right? So, it kind of went, uh, let me now just minimize this, it is better to do it there. Yeah, so, this is what it looks like and yeah. So, the momentum based gradient descent, it was clear from the speed, it was going faster, right? But then what was happening is that it was often overshooting, right? So, it went here, it should have gone here, but it just went here. Then it took a U-turn, then it again took a U-turn, then it again took a U-turn, right? So, you can see that uh, you can play the video again and you can see that it is taking quite a few U-turns before it reaches its goal and this is exactly the analogy that I go if you are on a scooter or a bike or a car and it is going fast then you overshoot, come back, overshoot, come back. But what is happening in this case as happens in real life also, you will still reach your goal faster than the guy who is walking right in this case. So, momentum based gradient descent oscillates in and out of the minima valley as the momentum carries it out of the valley, right? And then it takes a lot of U-turns before finally converging. Despite these U-turns, it still converges faster than the gradient, uh, vanilla gradient descent, right? And I'll just quickly play the video once more to show this. This is important, right? So after 50 iterations, momentum-based gradient descent is at a very low loss, whereas gradient descent was a very high loss, right? And 50 iterations corresponds to two seconds of the video. There are 25 iterations per second here. So I'll just play it quickly again. One second it is already much ahead of gradient descent. Two seconds, it is actually reached the minima. It is now just going to keep oscillating there, but gradient descent is still very far. And now, despite these oscillations, it has reached its answer, whereas gradient descent is still trying to reach there, reach there, reach there, still not there, and now it is there, right? So, you can see that momentum-based gradient descent reached there much quicker than gradient descent despite these oscillations. So, what we would like to see next now is that can we, the oscillations are a part of the life now, right, given that we are moving fast, but can we do something to reduce these oscillations and that is the idea behind Nesterov based uh, gradient, Nesterov accelerated gradient descent. So, that is what we will see in the next video. Thank you.